All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Be Fit Podcast. I am your host, as always, Connor Murphy. Uh, to follow along with what we're doing, you can follow Big Night Fitness on Instagram. You can check us out for our classes at bignightfitness.com. And you can follow myself at Connor T. Murphy on Instagram if you want to. If not, well, here we go. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a pivot today. As opposed to normally speaking on behalf of physical fitness, um, I was inspired by a good friend of mine to actually start to talk about mental fitness. And this relates, I want to relate it to the fitness industry um, in a couple of different ways, but but also know this can be relative to anyone um, who is uh, either either struggling or or wants to work on their their on their mental fitness or on their on their mental well being. So it started off with a post from uh, one of my really good friends. We call each other uh, brothers from another mother. Um, him and I, I was I was grateful to have met up with him in St. Thomas. Him and his wife. We all opened up the first CrossFit gym in the Virgin Islands. Um, the man's resume is is longer and um, more distinguished than than most of the people I've ever met. But that's not that's not why he ever wants anyone to respect him and not why I do either. It's more so his actions and, and what he does to give back. So he started this thing called a rare sense um, because it's you know kind of contrary to common sense. But a rare sense, and, and the focus is on mental fitness. And in and, and one of his recent posts, we, he, was, he was discussing or he wrote a blog post on you know, our own thought process or how we think, um, not only how we think ourselves, but how we think of ourselves. And it made me think about, one, myself, if I can be selfish here, which I am constantly, uh, and two, another really good friend of mine who... A good friend of mine, he always has really, really good things to say. Again, super accomplished individual, always has good things to say about other people, is never putting anyone else down with the exception of himself. And and a lot of times it comes off as a joke, but you know, how he views himself is in this light that that no one else does. And it starts to lead into the action of, oh, maybe, maybe this is who I am. When you have those those kind of like those, those mental thoughts and relating it to the fitness industry. I know me for sure. Um, you know, if I post a class on a schedule and I don't get as many people to show up or let's say no one shows up to this, I start to have those negative thoughts myself. I start to have those. Am I not a good trainer? Am I not a good instructor? Am I not, um, giving back enough to the people for to want them to come? And, and those thoughts are there and it's okay for those thoughts to be there. But that doesn't define who I am. I can choose to either acknowledge and live out those thoughts or just kind of watch them as they, as they pass by. Similar feelings to when you're signing up for a class, whether you're an instructor or not. If you're just coming into a class and, and you finish last place in, in a workout and people are cheering you on and, and a lot of people have negative thoughts with that. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm fat, I'm slow, um, I'm not good at this. I'm uncoordinated. And there's all, you know, all this negative self-talk and, and it's, it's just quite frankly, not true. You just don't have to believe that even though it's going on in your head, you can understand and respect that those thoughts and feelings are there, but you, you don't have to choose to take that and think, okay, this is who I am is and the first point of this is to be a little bit more positive about how you speak about yourself. It does change a lot on how we reflect on our day and it and it does change a lot on how we actually carry ourselves. So if you're someone who who has nice things to say about everyone but maybe not those great things to say about yourself, maybe try to change that. It doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be daily affirmations every day, you know, getting in the mirror and saying, "I'm awesome." Uh, it could be that that could be, you know, the the tactic that you use. But maybe just acknowledge that there's going to be some negative thoughts and negative feelings towards yourself, and that doesn't necessarily mean they're true. You can you can yield to them and think, okay, well, those are that's a thought process. Now we're going to move on and be more positive. Um, and that was kind of the first piece of it, and then and then the second piece that's kind of that internal negativity. The second piece is the is the external negativity, and um. You know, I, I was talking about or thinking about this after I read Chris's article 
um, which also goes down this path. And in the article, um, by the way, you can follow Chris on social media at this Chris Irwin, and you can look at his his um, site. It's it's all free, uh, a rare sense. It's really really profound and thought provoking uh, information. And again, just an incredible person hoping, hoping to have him on the show soon. Uh, but if you want to check that out, I want to give credit to where credit is due. But when we start to talk about that external negativity, I think, uh, you know, I read the daily stoic. I'm a big fan of stoics. I think Epictetus is my favorite stoic, but, but in, in one of the, the sayings around negativity and it is, uh, it is, if someone is successful and provoking you, know that your mind is complicit in the provocation. I'll say that one more time. If someone is successful in provoking you, know that your mind is complicit in the provocation. Meaning that just because someone is saying something negative does not mean that you have to react poorly to it. And there are small senses of this and there are big, big, giant things to where, I, I hate to say it, but it, it doesn't matter. You know, it's a difference between someone saying something like, you know, oh, quite the outfit today in a negative sense, or someone saying something that's, that's very personal to you, that's very personal to your beliefs, whether it's religion, whether it's politics. But just because someone says something does not mean that you have to react negative, negatively to it. In fact, you don't have to react at all. In fact, by reacting negatively, um, in the same article, Chris was qu- quoting a friend of his, it is, is that you are giving your power away. If someone says something to you and you react negative and you let it ruin your day, you're giving your power to that person that you either disagree with, which is okay, or that you may not understand what their point was. So, you know, I think, and, and I don't just want to sit here, um, you know, and talk about, hey, don't do this. But a couple of ways that I think about are, are ways to get better at it uh, is one is to try to understand what that person means by what they said. So asking a follow-up question. And here's my anecdotal story for this. Uh, I, have a, I have a friend, I was going to say good friend. I consider him a good friend. We don't know each other really well. Um, his name is Kevin Ogar. You can follow him at Kevin Ogar on Instagram, incredibly, incredibly inspiring story, incredibly inspiring athlete, incredibly inspiring person, just generally great person. If I try to take a long story and cut it short, he was an incredible CrossFit athlete, was injured in a competition and is paralyzed from the waist down, is still an incredible athlete competing in CrossFit. And like I said, it's, it's, it's incredibly motivating and inspiring. But the reason why I bring up Kevin is we had a conversation and I actually think during this conversation, I had, I had tipped over multiple times in his wheelchair at like an after party somewhere. So don't think I'm like cool for saying this. This is just his words that were cool. I was probably being an idiot at the time. And, and I referenced what, what is not offensive to call your situation? Because as I'm sure you can start to think there are certain words that go into your head when you think of someone who is paralyzed from the waist down. And his, his answer was not, well, these words and then these words offend me or this. It is, it depends on their intentions. If someone says, oh, you know, Kevin was, you know, this and was, was crippled in an accident and then went through and they, and they, they kind of had good intentions about it, but maybe that's not his favorite word. You know, he, he doesn't let that get under his skin or affect him negatively. And if someone says, hey, you know, he's um, a paraplegic or is paralyzed from the waist down or is, is wheelchair or handicapped or whatever, if, if the intention behind it is just to describe the situation, then there's really nothing to be offended about. And then he said, you know, moving forward, if someone is trying to say it to be an asshole, um, you know, I don't even want to go down the, the, the alleyway of, of what someone would say to describe that, but I'm sure you can use your imagination, then, then yeah, then someone's trying to be offensive, then it's not necessarily the certain word, it is the intention behind the person. And maybe instead of reacting, you just think, that's not a person that I want to spend time around. To not let their words get the best of you, to not let yourself give the power away. You know, I was having a, I was having a conversation 
with a buddy and he brought up a really good point. And this is again, someone else's uh, you know understanding or someone else's um, way to deal with negativity in words is that if I were to insult Hurley, so Hurley's our, our producer. He's right here. He's looking at me. Beautiful man. He doesn't have a camera on hey. himself, but yeah, <laughs> there he is. Um, so Hurley came into the office the other day and I was like, I love your haircut. And he was like, oh man, it's, yeah, it's different. It was shorter than I thought. And I'm like, I love it. I think it looks good. And I wasn't just blowing smoke up his ass. Like I liked your haircut. But if I were to come in to the office and say, Hurley, your haircut looks like shit. I mean, it's, that's not a, a good thing to say. And not to say that, that Hurley is either stoic or not stoic about it. But those words could sit and resonate with him like, like, man, now I'm insecure about my haircut or now this, as opposed to letting it bounce off and being like, well, it doesn't matter what this person said. And what was interesting is someone said, so Hurley, instead, if I said, tienes un mal corto de pelo, how would you feel? Well, I did take Spanish in high school. Okay. So what did I just say? Uh, I, you have a, I didn't get that second word. And Sorry. that's that. No, that's the point here. I didn't know he took Spanish too. If I were to ask Alex who's sitting Apparently in the corner. not good enough. <laughs> yeah. So if I say that, there's really no offense taken towards it mm. because you didn't know what I said. Mm -hmm. I said the exact same thing. I said you have a bad haircut in Spanish, but what it comes down to is it's like, well, I didn't really comprehend or understand what he said. The exact same words were said. So you just brush it off and move on. Maybe that, as opposed to ask, you know, one way, asking the follow-up question to realize someone's intention, two, just brush it off. Act like it's a different language. Actually, it doesn't matter what is being said. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't agree with it. And that was a really cool and kind of positive way to think about, hey, if someone is trying to offend me, it's like, they're not, they're not in my friend group. They're not on my, not on my same page. I don't need to listen to what this person's saying. It's irrelevant. It's another language that I don't understand. You can move on from that. I want to move through because I, I have to write myself little uh, kind of timelines here so I don't, so I don't you know, move around too much. Um, the last thing is, uh, maybe not last thing, but I, you know, I think there's, there's a difference between um, personal, just negative opinions on what someone's doing. And then when someone comes down on something that you are passionate about, you know, people could say pretty much anything they want about me. And I'm to the point now that it's like, it, it, I really don't care. Now you want to get under my skin or when I'm trying to work better, say something about what I'm, what I'm passionate about. Say something negative about CrossFit. Say something negative about Big Night Fitness. Say something negative about my daughter. Say something negative about any of these different things. That's what's going to fire me up. And I need to get better at doing that. I need to get better at, at not having to, you know, defend what's happening with this brand. I mean, even big night fitness has, has, you know, taken on some hardships from people who either want to start rumors or maybe they've heard something about our brand and everyone's gone through it. There's no one who's, you know, who's just Im impervious to that. There's been negative things that are said about this brand. And I think one way to deal with that, as opposed to uh, you know, me just being angry and coming about and saying, hey, hey, everyone, this is what we're doing that, that means that this isn't true and, and this is what we're doing. Um, I think I read this in a bathroom of a fitness facility and it was the last thing on a list. And it, it went something like, do not dispel rumors. Live in such a way that does it naturally. Do not dispel rumors. Live in such a way that does it naturally. So if someone wants to say something about our company that is not true, I don't need to sit there and waste my energy defending it. We need to continue to go down the road to where if someone hears that and they look at the actions that we're taking, it's clear that that's not true. And that's the way to deal with things and not letting that stuff get under your skin. And I'm not saying it's fucking easy. It is difficult, but it makes so much, it makes a situation so much easier and simpler and better. It's difficult, but there's some things that we can work on. Now, the last thing, I don't, I don't know if this has as much to do about um, fitness as it does, just about kind of the, the negative input. And it's, it's again, another thing that I, I've read or stolen from some sort of book. But let's say there's, there's a friend, and we all may have that friend, 
or, or friend group or company to where each time we have a conversation with them, they, they're sharing the negative information that someone else said about you. So I talked to, you know, I talked to X and X is like, oh man, you should have heard what this person was saying about you, blank, blank, blank. And now there's words that are trying to come in to affect my attitude to change my day. So one thing that we're trying to do, right, we're not trying to give away our power to let someone else's words affect us. But the second thing, and this is what I want you to pay attention to, I am less concerned about what a third party that I don't know or I'm not friends with or I'm not close with, I'm less concerned about what the third party has to say about me as much as I'm concerned about why they are comfortable saying it to my friend. If there's someone that you're passionate about, if someone wants to say something negative about my family, that's not going to be a conversation that's had. You're going to shut that shit down right away. That that's not something that you say about this. But what you need to ask yourself is, why is this person comfortable saying negative things about me? That's what you should question more. Not why people are saying negative things, but who they're able to say it to. You know, think about your best friend. Think about someone who you care about more than anything in the world. One, someone probably doesn't have the proverbial balls to come to you and start saying negative things about them, whether true or untrue. But two, if that were to happen, you're going to shut that shit down right away. Oh, I, I heard that this is what's going on. It's like, hey, I don't, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to talk about rumors. That's one of my best friends. That's my brother. That's my sister. That's my daughter. That's, that's my family. I don't want to hear you say that. Those are the people that you want to keep around. But always raise an eyebrow when there's that one person who always has, the, you know, to relay the information, the gossip. that Someone had something to say about you. Why are they comfortable telling you that? Just something to think about. You know, down the road of, of the mental fitness, there's just a couple of things. The internal battles, we got to be more positive about ourselves. The external, we can't give away our power to let someone else's words offend us. A couple of different ways to go about it. And the third, just be cautious about your circle. Listen to what's being said, understand it, and then take action on what you want to do moving forward. Uh, I know a little bit of a different flavor today, but I really appreciate you guys tuning in to the Fit Podcast. If you have any thoughts or concerns on this one, feel free to drop it in the comments. Uh, again, a really, a really passionate topic here. I know um, May is, is, is the you know, mental health month, and I think it's a very important thing, especially in a lot of different communities where um, you know, suicides are, are prevalent and, and depression and anxiety and that stuff. We, we can talk about this stuff. If you agree or disagree, let me know. We can have a conversation about it. But more than anything, I appreciate you guys tuning in and listening. And I look forward to catching up with you next week. Hopefully from this, we can get Chris Irwin to, to come on to here and have a podcast and, and give us some real insight, not just my regurgitated stuff on, on mental health and mental wellness. All right. Cheers, guys.